and that the tougher he acted, the more untouchable he'd be. He a lot of niggas think like that. Fights, wouldn't listen to his teachers and even bought a strap to school. Chilling. <laughs> and school still drilling. And, got, and to make matters worse, his sister got hit too. And then mm, I that's when they the shot the call. Like, the I'm a tough, and I just get the call. Like, you know, I'm talking about. That's how I turned into Rico Reckless. That's how I got the Reckless on my name. These exotic boys, smoke exotic ops. You ain't heard about murder boys, we got exotic glocks. Tied to pull up real fast, with a lot of shots. Bitch, I'm feeling just like Mac, I got a lot of guac. Moolah gang, go down, it's your boy Mac Moolah, a.k.a. Mr. Moolah. Mac, I'm back with another video. Y'all know how we rockin', man. Cloud stockin', man. Keep the cushion my pocket, man. Listen, check it out. We finna get into this video, okay? I ain't gonna lie, this motherfucker, this motherfucker seems like it's hot. Oh, photo great. I never really heard the full story behind Rico Reckless. I just know, like, the, the when he came out with the diss and everybody. So we finna see what's bussin'. For real, for real, man. Make sure y'all smash that thumbs up button, that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Subscribe to the rest of my channels. Links is in the description, man. Listen, I got some you gonna like down there, shorty, in every single category. On Bro Grave, it's the best ever, shorty. So go down there and tune in to your boy. On Bro Grave, we doing this shit bigger than big, sir. Please stop tweaking on me, sir. Go down there with your boy, gang. On Bro Grave, my main channel, my second channel, it's always busting. On Funnel Grave, we get at least 100,000 views every day on both channels. Stop playing. You feel me? We doing more bigger than big on other channels, man. We doing it crazy. So make sure y'all just tune in everywhere, shorty. That's how we doing it. That's how it's going to be. All 2024 is up and it's stuck there on Bro Gray. Ski! Like, you should see, like, where Obama stay at. Like, where Obama house at up in Chicago is, like, heavily guarded by, like, uh, Secret Service. But two blocks over is the Young biggest money. shootout zone ever up in yep. Chicago. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. He's not lying. Obama, Obama, Obama house was probably... I could walk there in maybe 20, 30 minutes. I can drive there in like five minutes, five, six minutes from my crib. And two blocks over is 051 Young Money. Two blocks over from there is 53rd and Drexel. That's they ops. You got three more blocks over is 47. You take like what? Three blocks over the wood line. That's 46. You got six, seven, eight. <laughs> You got eight gangs right here, old bro grave. Like that shit ain't no joke. I, I call it population control. Yeah, I know what the f going on, man. They, man, and they his mansions no right there, state like rich, the Pokemon State Pole, the, the, you know, they know how they. Uh, and then I just get the call, like I'm in trap and shit. I just get the call, like you know, I'm talking about. That's how I turned into Rico Reckless. That's how I got the Reckless on my name after that situation. Hold on, y'all, before we get back into the video, because we finna get right back into it. I gotta tell y'all about the Moolah membership. The Moolah membership is a website that I started a few years ago. Since I started this website, I have been able to put on so many of y'all, and I want you to be the next person to get put on. I'm gonna give you instructional videos, step-by-step -step instructions. I'm literally giving you lessons out weekly, daily. For you to understand these different categories, we talking about business, financial literacy, credit, crypto, we talking about stocks, we talking about Amazon, we talking about dropshipping, we talking about YouTube. I'm literally giving you the gems to be a boss, the gems to be a successful entrepreneur in 2023. So this is all you have to do. Click the link in the description, sign up right now for the low, low price of $50 a month, bro. $50 a month, you're gonna get access to a one-on-one -on -one help with me. You're gonna get access to my group chats where my experts worldwide work around the clock, 24 seven, to make sure you have the best stock and crypto call outs. That means all you gotta do is buy the same stocks and cryptos that I'm buying and make some of the all this bread. Very simple, very easy on Brokey. Stop waiting, stop procrastinating. Click the first link in the description right now, especially if you want to be a boss. And if you dead serious, man, if you want to put that work in and get that money on, I'm talking about that easy money on, click that link in the description, shorty, right now, because we only got 2,000 spots, and I would hate to see you be missed out. Skate. Shit, bro, this shit really, this for real in Chicago. That rap beat shit is getting niggas shot. It ain't fake. Yeah, I pop right outside. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. You know many rappers have claimed that they built themselves up from nothing, but most of them were able to get their foot through the door with collabs with bigger artists. But Rico nigga, Reckless yeah. is somebody who actually did it himself. I he started it. off as just a kid who liked to rap and is now one of the biggest names in Chicago. Not only as a rapper, but a personality. In this video, we're going to bring you the raw truth of Rico Reckless's story and how he fought against all lies to get where he is today. I mean, from oh, beefs now. with people like Lil Mister, 600 Breezy, Snapdog, all types of cats, as well as jail time, 
he really, really was out here. So without further ado, yeah. let's skip the play play and get Rico, down to business. Rico, from Rico, Rico was right? born Ronnie Ramsey, and he was born with what we would call the opposite of a silver spoon in his mouth. Throughout his Ronnie early Ramsey, life, he was constantly Ronnie. moving from one side of Chicago to the other, from mm, Inglewood okay. to the east side. He's lived through it all. That ain't and good. Seeing his family go through hard times ended up making him a very hard-working person, too. Home but bro. while he did have the drive in him, he didn't have the father figure to guide him through life. That led him to picking up things from the men that were surrounding him, who weren't really men at all. And actually, they weren't anybody worthy of looking up to. With them, oh, he now. became a teenage bully and had no regard <laughs> for the people around him. It gave him this false sense of security and that the tougher he acted, the more untouchable he'd be. A he lot was of niggas think like into that. Fights, wouldn't listen to his teachers and even bought a strap to school. Chilling. <laughs> and school still drilling. And got suspended from school every year. But that's just what the environment he grew up in was calling for. You had to be a tough kid who didn't care about anything to get somewhere. Somebody had to be on top. And if it wasn't you, it would be somebody else. And you'd be the one getting stepped on. Rico yeah. kept up this way I of living him, when he broke into the music world. He was a natural at rapping and he knew that if he worked hard enough at it, he'd get somewhere with it. Throughout his life, he looked up to several artists like Chance the Rapper, Lupe Fiasco, King Louie, and Lil Durk. That's who he wanted to be like, so he yeah. started rolling out mixtape after mixtape, hoping that he'd garner an audience. But he took it a little too far. Instead of getting prop guns in his music videos, he, he just real get your those straps he had on him. <laughs> that got him into serious trouble, and he ended up under house arrest for three years. Okay. This was one of the first times that he saw firsthand what having illegal firearms could do to his life. Right. His freedom was taken away from him at a time where he really could have used it, and he could have yeah. been making better videos for his mixtapes and gradually climbing the ladder. Though this would end up being a very minor seven back compared to what happened next one of his closest friends samuel was taken out he was the kid still in his early teens and it really showed rico how straps cannot just take lives but also affect the lives left i ain't gonna behind. lie that first that first homie you that like the first homie you know in high school that died some like that bro that turned your whole life upside down cool like before then it's like you was just a regular kid go to school you might do some bad shit, but you know what I'm saying? I might skip school. You know what I'm saying? You might get into a fight like that. Nigga might talk crazy. You might argue with the teacher, like that. But when your homie die, like this your real homie, like you was just like, I remember being a freshman and like, bro, I was just with this nigga like two days ago. And I come to school and everybody talking about he died. I'm like, what the fuck? So that shit, that shit turn your whole, that shit really show you like, 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 that's just show you that you could die, too. So now you got to start acting. You got to start doing different shit. Motherfucker, that shit affect everybody different, but that shit be crazy. Samuel's demise affected him so much that he couldn't function afterwards. And to make matters worse, his sister got hit, too. And then mm, I that's when they shot the call. The, like, the, I'm the crib up. And I just get the call. Like, you know, I'm talking about... That's how I turned into Rico Reckless. That's how I got the Reckless on my name. After that situation, they started calling me Reckless because I turned the fuck up. I started being so wild because I started being niggas trying to the family. Yeah. For what? Yeah. On some hateful shit. At this yeah. point, it was clear to Rico that once his house arrest ended, he now. needed to figure out a way to do better. Throughout the yeah. last year of his being homebound, he wrote as much music as he could. He started releasing it too. Every time he dropped music, he got more and more popular. And if he just played his cards right and stayed away from the gang drama, he yeah. had a real shot at making it. Even if that meant leaving behind the place that he grew up in. All Although he was do, proud of being from Chicago, he couldn't deny the drama the that was around and so natural to where he was. He's been really open about the fact that Chicago predisposes you to fail. The gang drama is everywhere you go. It's hard to do anything without getting caught in it. If it's not beef with another, it's territorial disputes. If not that, you're just caught in the crossfire that you have nothing to do with. It's a fight that's extremely hard to win. He's yeah, even yeah. compared the situation to how Obama's house is heavily guarded because you really can't survive otherwise. Yeah. Obama house set up in Chicago is like heavily guarded by like uh, Secret Service. You but can't even put on that block. The biggest sh shootout zone ever up in Chicago. Like, people don't know that. Like, and that's what I'm saying. It's like. For him, Chicago has a long way to go. Yeah, boy, he ain't lying either. To be. Although he did start to feel that way during his house arrest, but after he became a father, that feeling just got stronger. Despite the love that he has for the place, he can't see him bringing his child up in the same environment that he grew up in. Yeah. That's good on him. Oh, bro. I, I'm still in Chicago. I stay in the hood. I still stay on the block. But I want my kids to f so they can have a chance at life. Yeah, that's what's up. I know what's going on. <laughs> this is yeah, something he's received a lot of hate over, but he's no still cap. very vocal about it. What he considers the worst of it all is the fact that while people do know the no on the Chicago, either. the news really he, doesn't he, cover he, it. He, he wanted them niggas like, I compare him to like Kodak Black in the sense where he gonna play crazy, he gonna play like funny and stupid and shit. Like, 
you know, just laugh and he gonna play ignorant, but he's not no dumb ass nigga. Like, nigga, these niggas do not be slow, bro. Trust me. Like, Rico Reckless is not dumb. Like, not Any even a little bit. The street crimes are too intense for the mainstream media to ever even cover. So until you're really in it, you don't get the full <laughs> feel. Living in Chicago right. is really like. Yeah, no, this is Chicago. Real. You know, this is the reality of what you, you don't know what it's like to live in Chicago unless you live in that shit. They don't talk about on the news. Yeah. You know what I know? Like, it's f in our city. And we just trying to maintain and survive. Yeah. Man. Like, nah, no cap. Like, this, like, do you sometimes see Chicago news? Like, how many people get shot? When mainstream media doesn't cover something, <laughs> like, man. it's up to the people who actually live there to bring it to the light. So he started rapping about it. With that, though, he ended up stepping on some toes very publicly. He remixed Tupac's Hit Him Up in 2016. And did this is just about it. every rapper in Chicago. And with that, he got his name popping everywhere. No, some of real. these feuds were limited to just people dissing him online while others panned out a little differently. Rico and Little Mister even got into a physical fight at the Want corner store. Could, not these no straps were involved, though. The fight was viral and was the cause for plenty of laughter amongst the spectators on social media. Um, bro. Even I have to admit it wasn't a good look for nah, either that they do Little not, Mister they, they is no longer with us. R.I.P. to him. But before he passed, he made it clear how he felt about the issue with Rico. Hey, you don't Okay. The whole beef really about Instagram and this is 50 interviews and shit and What? It's about interviews? Interviews and Instagram lives and, shit and you know what I'm saying? Steady, my name steady coming about. You know what I'm saying? Like you just seen, I was just in his video. Like, uh. Not too so, long ago. Yeah, I was in his video. So, shit, you feel me? Everything was good on my book. So, I go, I go looking and I go look on the internet and I, I'm saying, let's sneak this and shit. Talk about old shit. 2012 about me like that sneak this and like the hate the hatred so real in my city you know what I'm saying like Rico on the other hand still expressed throughout the whole situation that he had love for Lil Mister he blamed the initial yeah, fight on the fact that Lil Mister smile. was getting too faded around that time and was talking reckless and the altercation was just a product of everything that was said online you got some wood we go to the gas station, we got a, uh, like, by the, uh, by the little stove, like a little stove. Soon I pull up to the stove, guess who in that mug? Like, <laughs> you see us and then run the stove. This love mister. I say, this little, this <laughs> on the net say, if he don't see me, he gonna clap me up and I ain't from the... Around that time, Rico even had some issues with the infamous Detroit rapper, Snapdog. I was losing too much money, man. Don't y'all want to make it home to y'all kids, man? Nah. Uh, Cause I'm the type of nigga I seen your mama some roses just to show you how close I can get to you. You better, y'all better leave me alone, bro. I'm focused on the money on and giving better the, leave the me alone. Some music, man. And plus, I don't beef with y'all rap niggas. According to Snap Dog, oh, the issue from Rico talking ish about his brother. Smoke the snap. It was just basically because you disrespected his brother. Ah, uh, it wasn't even that though. It was the fact that he just front of the computer, bro. You know, at the end of the day, bro, I've been told you, bro, we can link and fight, bro. And you did all that action for the computer. Then your big coming called and tried to knock the. Then you went on the computer and tried to act like that one what it was. Then you tried to sneak to my city and then knowing that I knew you was here and I said let's link up and you were scared. Then you tried to do Of course that feud never I got don't dead. know why them need it. Hey bro, we grown this shit, bro. I'm not finna be going back and forth with you on the internet about this shit. So when we can link up and fight and all that shit, bro, I'm grown this shit, bro. Motherfucker gonna have kids. I don't have no kids yet, but these niggas be having kids, bro. Like you got kids, gang. You don't have time to be linking up, fighting, dying and shit, doing all this stupid ass. Shit. You got kids at home, gang. Like just be a dad like it's it comes to a point where you got to leave all the streets alone fighting shooting gambling whatever the f leave that shit alone and go be a dad and a husband gang or go be a dad and a boyfriend or whatever the f but go do that bro that should be your everyday main priority i'm not going to link and fight with no nigga now let alone when i have kids are you f insane you think i'm finna get in my car call who i gotta call get in my car drive somewhere get dressed drive somewhere like boy is you lost your mind i'm not doing that stupid that stupid i don't understand we grown as bro we grown as bro if we gonna do it for the rap i always say i'm gonna call a nigga be like hey boy hey, we'll go up if we do this little fake beef this little fake fight should i just go up i bet say less i bet all love then we just gonna make up at the end i bet let's get it and then go back and forth like that and just do it like that if that's what y'all want to do. But all that, like, real pressure or real, like, really mad yelling at the camera, I'm not doing that shit. Rappers a lot of clout at that time. There was even plans to have a boxing match to hash things out. That didn't materialize, but it didn't look like it was even necessary because it wasn't that serious in the first place. Mm -hmm. The smoke Rico had with 600 Breezy seemed a little more personal, though. I just sent a tweet out, like, you diss me a song, you get up and like, oh, you know he went right out. He, he put up an old video, made it seem like he was driving down King Drive. You know what I'm saying? It was raining, the video rained on the car. It was like, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was 
crazy. I pop right outside, put the shit right on Twitter. Nigga, I'm out here for real. <laughs> like, I ain't with that rap. 600 had a good point in saying that even though Rico was looking at this like a sport, in Chicago, you can't really play like that. Even rap bars turn into clapped cars. Bro, yeah, I feel him though. Shit. I lost my homies because of this rap. Like, I you know feel what I'm saying? Like, his homie Jojo did because of this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what this bro, really, this for real in Chicago. That rap beat is getting niggas shot. Yeah. It ain't fake. However, in that yeah, era, Rico no was on one and wasn't caring about nothing, bro, was saying. Uh, yeah. All right, man, so 600 Breezy in the incident. A 600 year old bitch. <laughs> that's gonna get smacked 600 times. <laughs> this two simmered down, thankfully, and Rico I like Rico reckless like funny, that though. was really either gonna turn you into a person that was ready for smoke at all times, or you flip the tables entirely and figure out how to do better. Oh, Rico chose the latter. As soon as he felt like he had enough money to start over, he picked up his family and moved out of Chicago. Gone. He wanted Quit. to put as much Telling physical you. space between himself and where he grew up as possible Telling you, so cool. he could at least attempt to change his life for the better. But Chicago feuds don't really have any borders. Just because he moved wouldn't mean that he'd just be able to move nah, away scot-free. He that couldn't leave any deep loose enough in that. For him to actually leave Chicago life, he had to set everything right. So right before he officially made the move, he made a lot of effort to figure out how to squash the long-standing beef that he had with everybody. From Mr. to STL, he set things right with everybody, most of it privately. Beef is a part of the game in Chicago, and Rico wanted out. That isn't easy to do, so he had to put in a lot of effort to get there because his goal was always to get out of there. While it might seem like he was putting in way too much effort to leave a city, what he's saying actually makes sense. Lil Mister, the man that he had fought with at the corner store, ended up getting taken out a few months later at that very corner. At that very he had corner. the money, That's he's crazy. made it big, he could have gotten out of there, but yeah. he didn't do it. Because of that, he was stuck in a vicious cycle of drama that yeah. eventually got him. Yeah. Rico has been so serious about putting space between himself and where he grew up that that he says he doesn't even visit anymore. Why? Well, because I don't the second either. you step foot back into that environment, it's something cracking. goes wrong. Yeah. He's even done time for things that he never even did just because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. Even this isn't easy. It's not just about getting a better apartment and moving your family over. It's also the pressure from the hood. People he grew up with actually still call him out and say Dad. he's not really from the hood because he actually got up and left. Him, Dad. that's what everybody should be doing, but the environment is only getting worse with him. Past couple of years, Rico has gotten to a much better place financially, career-wise, and personally. But the hood life didn't really leave him behind. He's still been locked up a few times for various reasons, although he maintains that he is wrongly convicted every time. Yeah. Because all he's really trying to do is show everybody that it's possible to get out. I mean, not too long ago, a film was released of Rico fighting in jail. I mean, bruh still got internet beats <laughs> with other cats like Ruga and them, but this just seems to be a way of life for bruh. And then that smoke keeps him in the algorithm and keeps him relevant. Yeah, so it bro. is what it is. As bro. long as people on the other end know that this that. things don't turn fatal, what can we really say? Nevertheless, now, Rico isn't just a rapper. He's an influencer, internet personality, and an advocate who's trying to inspire as many people as he can to leave where they're from if it's no good. Yeah. He wants the gang drama I ain't gonna lie. to stop. Rico, Rico, right kid, like I said, he not no stupid ass nigga, bro. And... You feel me? That nigga, at, it was one point where he, all them interviews, he used to be so funny, bro. Like, that used to be funny as hell, bro. And I'm just glad, like, honestly, at a point in time, bro, I really thought Rico Reckless was going to get whacked. Because, like, it was so many times where it was fights and other Chicago niggas seen him in Atlanta or some shit. And he was getting into it with some other nigga. He was just into it with everybody. Oh, bro, great. I was, like, hoping that nigga ain't get whacked. But I'm glad ain't nothing happened to bro on Funnel Grade. But, yeah, that's crazy, though, gang. Uh, Rico Reckless is definitely one of them men. He's definitely one of them savages. He's definitely from the city for real. And, uh, hey, shit, he made it out. Oh, bro, they say same shit I be saying, gang. You don't need that much money to get no apartment in no other state, bro. You feel me? Get your girl. Pick your girl up. And a lot of these niggas be having two kids. Pick your girl and your two kids up. Y'all can drive. Oh, bro, drive for 24 hours if you got to, gang. Get the f*** on. Move to Texas. Move to... Anywhere on bro, great nigga, move to New Mexico or Arizona, go somewhere else. Like, you feel me? That ain't Chicago and just start over. Put your kids in a different school. You feel me? Get you a nice little, perfect little, quiet apartment in the suburbs and go and be a suburban nigga now, folks. You've been gangbanging your whole life. It's over with. Try something different, gang. Y'all niggas be tweaking. Ski.